Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India discussing a uh, very very uh, interesting and uh, very very useful relevant topic that is the uh, how this motivation is related to the leadership. So, uh, we will discuss about uh, we will try to understand what is the motivation then the types and importance of motivation motivational approaches leadership qualities uh, to motivate and inspire your team why motivation matters in leadership, then the as usual the case study, research papers, book recommendation and the references is there, right. Uh, now, uh, this is the basically uh, if you define the technically hmm, from the Latin word um, mover which means to move, right and uh, the processes that account for an individual's intensity direction and persistence of effort towards attaining a goal is there. So, here we will find that is the whenever we are talking about the uh, in, uh, in individuals intensity, intensity to work, intensity to do right and uh, naturally uh, here that uh, process of direction is very very important do, but what to do, when to do, how to do, where to do. Right. So, therefore, in that case the direction especially what to do and when to do is there right and uh, persistence of efforts towards attaining a goal. So, that goal which we want to attain. So, intense uh, that is intensity to attain that goal no that is very very important is there how much you want to attain the goal and that intensity in other terms uh, I can say that is a, it is a willingness to do. And uh, you will find that a human brain when decides to do something then irrespective of whatever the barriers are there that the brain will do that particular uh, the act or attain the goal uh, whatever the social or economical specially. Hmm? Many times when we ask people that why uh, you uh, uh, could not do this thing. Right, and then he will say, "Sir, my uh, economic condition was not good. My social condition was not good." On the other side, we find that is the people much poorer uh, as compared to that person are able to attain the goal. Much uh, people have attained the goals uh, irrespective of their non-social support, right? And therefore, in that case, it becomes very very important. That is whatever the uh, intensity the person is having and if uh, it is to anyhow I have to achieve the goal then that will be the uh, always uh, uh, the, uh, the motive, motive to move right. When uh, we are talking about the leadership is there, hmm? so therefore in that case it is a direction is there. So, motivation is a process that initiates if we talk completely about this process of motivation. So, then this motivation is having the initiate. So, uh, this process of motivation which we are talking about that is going to be the uh, initiate then the guides right and that is the direction whenever we are letting it with the direction and maintains a goal oriented behavior is there ultimately that goal has to be achieved. So, here it becomes uh, important that when, uh, the how persons the willingness is there, how person is uh, going to get that direction, direction is important right that is uh, you can say that as we have uh, talked about the leader's role. 
So, leader uh, is a friend also, leader is a mentor also, leader is a teacher also, leader is a facilitator also, leader is a guide also, leader is a supervisor also, leader is a manager also. So, therefore, there are so many roles of the direction provider is there. So, it is the motivation is an important factor which encourages person to give their best performance. And uh, uh, recently we have seen in the Olympic uh, uh, that is uh, Mirabai Chanu and Niraj uh, Chopra. So, these are the examples to give their best performance and, uh, and in hockey teams also in India. So, mm, that is the uh, that help in reaching the enterprise goals. So, therefore, this is the best performance no. So, whatever the best performance is there in our context we are talking about the enterprise goals uh, uh, for the players it is it is, it is the, they are the best performance they have given. So, therefore, in that case we will find that is the whatever the uh, uh, motivation level of the performer is there irrespective of profession. So, he is a player uh, or he is a artist in uh, paintings and all or he is a teacher or he is a student whatever it is there. So, therefore, it plays a very very important role uh, in attaining the goals is there. So, a lot of research has been done and then it has been seen uh, that is the certain definitions which are relevant to in our context discussion is uh, Berelson and this Chinner a motive is an inner state it is an inner state. Hmm? So, that is a cognitive, cognitive state that energizes, activates or moves and directs or channels behavioral goals are there. Hmm? So, therefore, it is the uh, internal energy right um, and um, energy which he activates. Now, that is also we, we have to interpret these uh, and the terminologies and the contents in a proper uh, context uh, like uh, in the case of that is a positive act, positive goal, hmm? socially acceptable goals. So, therefore, in that case that will be the energies and that will be activation right. So, towards that positive goals right and as a result of which the goal has been achieved. And Joseph Cohen has defined motivation as the inner thrust behind the behavior is there. So, whenever we talk about the attitude, hmm, a relationship between the attitude. So, attitude will be there. And this attitude will lead to the behavior. So, that the that the inner thrust behind the behavior. So, inner thrust is attitude right and naturally behavior is in action. So, this is the action we are talking about. Now, means it is required both it is required your cognitive level and it is also required your action and therefore, in that case you will find that is the whenever we are talking about uh, this particular aspects then it is very very important to a state of mind and your line of action. When state of mind and action both will match right then that will be the motivation will be there high motivation will be there. The encyclopedia of management uh, motivation refers to the degree of readiness of an organism to pursue some designated goal and implies the determination of the nature and the locus of the forces including the degree of readiness. Hmm? So, this degree of readiness is nothing, but it is a motive it is, it is the inner thrust right which is making him to ready to do that particular task. Dubin has mentioned the definition as the motivation is a complex of forces starting and keeping a person at work in an organization is there. And naturally uh, the that state of mind is to continue with the organization that is a motivation is there. Now, there are two types of motivations intrinsic motivation and extrinsic motivation is there. Whenever we are talking about the intrinsic motivation can arise from the self generated factors that influence people's behavior. It is not created by external incentives. So, that is by within the person wants to achieve those goals 
by himself within is there. So, there is nothing the external uh, or extrinsic motivation. So, what is extrinsic motivation? Th things are done or for people to motivate them. Hmm? Uh, examples are there is the interest and enjoyment in the task itself, there is uh, enjoyment, the purpose, growth, curiosity, passion, self expression and fun. If, this, if these are the reasons for the uh, in, uh, motivation, motive to do achieve the goal, then we will say it is a intrinsic motivation is there. When it is the outcome is there to result by the doing the task because of the promotion, pay rises, bonuses, benefits, prizes, winning, perks. So, therefore, if these are the um, uh, factors are there, right, then def definitely that will be the extrinsic motivation is there. So, these are the things which have been introduced to uh, so that the person should feel motivated and then that will be becoming there achieving the goal is there, performance will be better. So, first and foremost is why we should motivate somebody for the high level of performance. So, organization must ensure that the employees have a high degree of motivation because highly motivated employees put extra effort into work and have a sense of belonging for the organization. So, then that will be them. Low employee turnover and absenteeism is there, that is the outcome is there. So, person is feel motivated, so he will be at the job he will not think to leave, leave the job, change the organization, employee turnover will be low and the people will like to come on the work and therefore, in that case it will be reducing the absenteeism also and the, the quality of these uh, production will be better, wastages and disruption in production schedule that will be minimum. So, low level of the uh, product, uh, absenteeism causes a low level of the production, poor quality right. So, therefore, in that case in spite of that it is better that is the person comes himself with the high motivation at the workplace. Acceptance of organizational change, social change and technology evolution happens in the external environmental factors are there and therefore, that affects the motivation of the employees. So, management must ensure that the changes are introduced in the organization and its benefits explained to the employees so that there is no resistance to change in organizational growth is achieved. Now, the one example I would like to give that is the introduction of technology, right. So, whenever we are talking about the introduction of technology, there is a resistance is there. So, I remember in banking industry in India, uh, when the computer was introduced in early 80s. Uh, so, so then at that time it is around early 80s. So, at that time it is uh, uh, that uh, employees have given the resistance and today we see that whole banking industry including SBI we see that is the mobile banking right. So, the, the growth, the achievement it has been the very fantastic. So, therefore, in that case uh, the, the whatever the changes are there. So, first they demotivate you because they make you unstable but the changes are better and therefore, in that case there is no resistance to change and organizational growth is achieved. Then organizational image, employees are the mirrors of any organization, yeah, it, you see that is the if you want to know the culture of any organization, uh, then you can just watch an employee who is working at the organization and then you will find that what type of the culture is there in the organization. Regular training and development program should be organized to keep employee updated with latest skills. Right. So, therefore, in that case uh, those type of the regular programs uh, which will be keep on them motivating, keep on them making the high, high gradation skills. So, therefore, they feel upliftment and whenever they feel the upliftment at the workplace, so then definitely they will be having uh, the more motivation. It will have a positive impact on the employees and the image of the organization will be improved. Now, now you see that is when the employees are uh, doing better organization's image is better, organization's image is better, employees are more motivated. So, it is a vicious circle and therefore, but from where to start? It has to be start with the employees because the employees are creating the organization. Organization image cannot create the employees, that is a culture, organization culture will be there, but in the beginning that culture is to be built by the employees and therefore, the employee should be highly motivated in the beginning. So, that the once their image is created and then the whoever is joins, so because of that culture he is also always feel the motivated. 
So, five motivational approaches are there Maslow's hierarchy of needs satisfy the needs to change behavior, achievement orientation, goal setting and the operant approach is there. Uh, the empowerment uh, give people autonomy and latitude to increase their motivation for the work is there. So, first we will talk about the Maslow's hierarchy of needs that is how does the context affect motivation is there. Now, according to Maslow it is the, the needs are into hierarchy. Suppose I ask you what is the need of the human being? So, many of you may say roti kapda or makkan and that is the food, clothes and shelter, but very few will say it is the food, water and air. Why? Because this physiological needs you know that physiological need which is available it does not motivate you. But a person who is the having the suppose he is living in a such a um, part of the country where the water supply is very difficult uh, and therefore, he has to bring the drinking water from the long uh, distance then definitely uh, sub somebody says no, no you will be shifted to that place where the water is uh, uh, ample water is available. Naturally, the employee will uh, that person will feel motivated and he will shift to that particular uh, location where the water is uh, ample water is available. So, there, therefore, the physiological needs right. So, they, they, they are motivated according to Maslow first they motivate them uh, these particular needs are there right. Second is need for the safety. So, there he, it is the that is the physical safety. Hmm? So, the, the need for uh, safety that that will be about uh, that is the person wherever he is living in the society whether he is physically safe or not that he will see. Then next is the social needs are there that is a need for affiliation with the other people that is belongingness is there and then need of self esteem and then need of self actualization. So, therefore, the Maslow has given this particular model in hierarchy. So, it goes from the physiological to safety, safety to social, social to self esteem and self actualization is there. But nowadays what we talk about that is this particular model that is the not necessarily into the hierarchy is there. The experience our experience says that is a not necessarily this model will be into hierarchy. Somebody may have the self esteem need may not have the social and safety like for example, the freedom fighter. So, freedom fighter were not having the safety need right they, they were having the self actualization need they were working uh, and motivated for their uh, getting the freedom for their country. So, that is not a, any these physiological or safety social needs this was these were not the needs were there. So, then it was not in hierarchy. So, the, the criticism of this theory is that uh, that is the Maslow has mentioned it is in hierarchy right, but uh, uh, it has been observed practically that uh, not necessarily hierarchy will be followed right and therefore, in that case many people may have the direct self actualization needs are there. So, physiological needs are the biological requirement air, food, drink, shelter, clothing, warm, sleep, safety needs are there uh, need for security and safety becomes salient, financial security, health and wellness, safety against accidents and injury, love and belonging needs, social needs are there is social and involves feeling as of the belongingness, friendship, family, social groups, community groups right. Then the self esteem needs when the esteem at the bottom three levels has been satisfied the esteem needs begin to play a more prominent role in motivating behavior. Now, here here is the point that is the the need at the uh, at the bottom level three levels have been satisfied. Hmm? But uh, as we I this is about um, mentioned in the theory. Uh, model Maslow's uh, hierarchy theory model, but uh, in fact it is not in hierarchy. The esteem needs begin to play a more prominent role in motivating behavior that is the status and recognition is there. Self actualization needs highest order need refer to the realization of a person's potential self fulfillment seeking personal growth and the peak uh, experience is there and therefore, it is a realization of self realizing self that what I can do and uh, what is my strength is my potential. 
So, that is the achievement orientation is there, how does the personality affect motivation. So, Atkinson has proposed that an individual tendency to exert effort towards the task accomplishment depends partly on the strength of his or her motivation to achieve success or as Atkinson called it achievement motivation orientation is there. So, therefore, it, it is whatever we say the uh, uh, in the theories motivation. Right. So, therefore, the, um, the Atkinson says that is it is the achievement orientation. So, naturally that is uh, motivation was what? What we have, we have discussed so far motivation is the willingness to achieve the goal. So, the achievement of goal, accomplishment of goal that is the achievement motivation. Maclean further uh, developed uh, Atkinson's ideas and said that individuals with a strong achievement orientation strive to accomplish socially acceptable endeavors and activities. And it looks at three needs, need for achievement, need for power and need for affiliation. So, need for achievement is the drive to excel to achieve in relationship to a set of standards, while the need for power is the need to make others behave in a way they would have otherwise. So, therefore, in that case the need for achievement to drive to excel right that is the most of the organizations they want that is their employee should have a very high need for achievement. And third one as I mentioned need for affiliation is a desire for friendly and close interpersonal relationship. So, now again it will be depend from individual to individual, somebody will be more for need for affiliation, somebody will be not more for need for power, somebody will be more for the need of uh, achievement. People with higher levels of achievement orientation are likely to do better in school, pursue postgraduate degrees, get promoted more quickly and get paid higher salaries and bonuses than their lower scoring counterparts. So, therefore, in that case uh, this need for affiliation right. So, that, that, that is uh, creating uh, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the direction, direction for the uh, employee to do the job voluntarily. Achievement orientation is often a key success factor for people who advances to the highest level of the organization. Right, and the naturally, uh, actually, uh, the, this uh, we can understand. That is, they went from the junior level to the top level. The what motivates a person? His achievement motivation is there. So, achievement motivation will be there. So, the person will be at the high level in the organization itself. Now, this was from the uh, uh, left hand side of the exercise. Right hand side is the goal, and that is goal accomplishment. So, how to clearly perform the targets of, uh, after the effect the motivation is there. So, one of the most familiar and is, uh, easiest formal system of motivation uh, according to the Locke and Latham goals are the most powerful determinants of the task behavior means goal, goals are there and then goals decide that how much one has to put the efforts. A theory that says that specific and difficult goals with feedback lead to the higher performance is there. So, therefore, in that case that that will be requiring that a particular specific and the difficult goals are there right. Goal should be smart uh, which stands for the specific measurable, attainable, relevant and the time bounded as there. And so, so therefore, whenever we take talk about the goals uh, then definitely that has to be very specific goal. Right, and then naturally that these goals are su supposed to be measurable and attainable, right? And then the relevant of the organization, what they exactly they want to do, and the time bounded will be there, right? So therefore, whenever we are talking about the goal goal setting, uh, um, uh, so in that case that the smart, right, that approach to be adopted. Uh, how do clear performance targets affect motivation leaders wanting to improve individual or team performance should set high but achievable goals. Now, this is also very important. The goal should not be uh, so um, uh, difficult that is it is not achievable. Whenever the person feels no that is this goal is not achievable then in that case uh, he will be it will be difficult for him uh, that is uh, to keep motivated because he starts believing that this is impossible. So, please do not keep the impossible goals, please keep the possible goals are there and express confidence and support that the followers can get the job done. And from where you bring these um, uh, possible goals? From the past experiences, past examples, surrounding industries, similar nature of jobs and from there you bring those goals. So, therefore, those goals will be achievable goals. So, the followers can get that particular job done. 
Uh, the Pygmalion effect occurs uh, when leaders articulate high expectations for followers. In many cases, these expectations alone will lead to the high performing followers and team is there. So, then no special guidance is required, only keeping the high um, goals um, that is the here it has been mentioned that right that is the, that that uh, goal will be uh, such an achievable goal will be there. So, therefore, uh, already uh, the, the person who is following uh, that goal that he will be uh, able to achieve that goal. The golem effect occurs when the leaders have little faith in their followers ability to accomplish a goal. Mm -hmm. So, therefore, in that case uh, um, they are rarely disappointed by the non achievement by their followers are there. So, basically what happens that is the, this, is, this is a Pygmalion effect. And therefore, in that case that is that they believe that no my follower will not be able to do and the follower it is not able to do that. So, therefore, that is a non achievement by the follower is because of that particular um, belief of the leader is there. So, the operant approach is there right uh, and one popular way to change the direction intensity of persistence of behavior is through rewards and punishment. And when properly implemented, there is ample evidence to show that the operant approach can be an effective way to improve follower motivation and the performance is there. So, that is a reinforcement and there is a punishment and the positive is there, negative reinforcement behavior is there. The positive punishment is there, negative punishment is there. And then whenever we are talking about the positive reinforcement, yes, the uh, naturally better results will be there. Whenever we are talking about the op operant conditioning is the punishment, then definitely that positive will be low and the negative may be high. However, it will depend on the situation itself. By improving the followers motivation and performance requires several steps clearly specify specific goal is to be there, determine if those behaviors are currently being punished rewarded or the ignored right. Find out what followers find rewarding and punishing now this is that, that will depend upon the follower that he will decide what is rewarding and what is not punishing. So, suppose you are talking about the working up to 6 o'clock. So, that may be for the rewarding for somebody, somebody may be punishing is there. So, therefore, you have your interaction with your followers is very, very important. Be careful while creating perceptions of inequity when administering the individual tailored rewards are there and uh, therefore, in that case uh, we have to create the individual uh, based rewards and the leaders should not limit themselves to administering the organizational sanction rewards and punishment. Rather leaders should practitioners should administer rewards and punishment in a con, uh, the contingent manner wherever it is possible. So, how to do uh, by empowerment? Hmm? Empowerment is the final approach to motivation. Some people believe empowerment is about the delegation and accountability. It is a top down process in which senior leaders articulate a vision and specific goal and hold followers responsible for the achieving them. While the others believe empowerment is more of a bottom up approach that focuses on intelligent risk taking, growth, change, trust and ownership. Followers act as uh, entrepreneurs and the owners so questions, rules and make intelligent decisions are there and accordingly they will be performing on the basis of the empowerment to the employees. The psychological components of the empowerment can be examined at both the macro and micro levels is there. Three macro uh, psychological components uh, they are under the empowerment are the motivation, learning and stress is there. So, these macro psychological components that can be studied. There are also four macro components of the empowerment is there and these components can be used to determine whether employees are empowered or unempo unempowered and they include the self determination, meaning and competence and influence is there. The empowerment continuum is there, there is a self determined sense of meaning high competence and high influence is there. The unempowered employees are other determined they are not, not sure if what they do is important low competence and the low influence is there. So, leadership qualities to motivate and inspire your team is provide a vision and purpose, set clear goals, lead by example, uh, encourage teamwork, be optimistic and positive, give present rewards, communicate with the team and empower team members. So, this recipe of the leadership qualities that will be keeping your employees more motivated and uh, inspiring your team is there. So, and how the motivation is related with the leadership is there, motivated uh, members make for a stronger uh, team right and the better communication equates to more success, projecting a positive attitude is the paramount. 
Uh, the focus on intrinsic over extrinsic motivation, which we have discussed in the pre, uh, beginning. Make in, uh, so, somebody will be motivated by intrinsic, somebody will be motivated by extrinsic motivation. Make individual connections that communicate the why, right? that is very important. Praise team members and build motivation, hold people accountable and provide feedback. Right? Ask questions often and work towards the solution and promote a healthy working lifestyle at the workplaces there. As usual, this is the case study hmm? that is about the credit to the stick is there and then on basis of this uh, you can answer uh, these uh, um, questions. This is the research paper, principles, leadership, and the teacher's motivation, right? Self-determination theory analysis is there. Transactional leadership would predict the controlled motivation is there. And uh, this is the book, understanding the motivation and emotions, right? And then uh, how these motivation and emotions that direct your successful leadership is there. So therefore, uh, why do they want what they want, right? So therefore, in that case, once you understand right then definitely in that case you can provide the right approach of direction these are the references for the further studies and this is all about the relationship between the motivation and leadership thank you